Hey Timmy, what's up? I wonder where that gone. Shouldn't take my phone, you know. Hmm. Okay, um well, looks like um Grail Seeker Tarot Shops put a few videos up on YouTube. That's pretty cool. For the love of tarot, what's that about? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I might give that a go actually. I mean, I, the last hashtag I did, um, a lot of people did check that video out, did help with the channel. And I am a millennial, so I've got to jump on the hashtag train. Otherwise, I'd be arrested by the internet police. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll give that a go. Why are you wearing a hashtag on your chest? I, I don't quite think that's how that works. Hey guys, welcome to Blue Six Tarot. I'm your host, Blue Six. Now, last week I watched a video by someone I follow on Instagram called Grail Seeker Tarot Shop. And she put up a video um, using the hashtag for the love of cards. And that was and that hashtag was started up by Two Path Tarot on YouTube, who basically wanted to collectively get a group of people on YouTube to talk about tarot essentially and uh, specific questions about tarot and about how how they use it and stuff so um, so I thought I'd do this as well because my last video did quite well and so I thought give this a go um, so any videos and decks I reference will be put a link in the description I'll put a link to uh, Two Path Tarot and Grail Seeker Shop uh, Tarot Shop uh, their videos um, in the description and any cards I reference that I've already got a link to they'll be in the description as well so hope you enjoy okay so the first question was asked is what's your first deck and this could either be your first tarot deck you know, first runes what have you so my first deck was this the uh, Titania's fortune cards now these are actually uh, Le Monde deck rather than an oracle or tarot and so these these I picked up so I keep them in this little bag here I don't actually use these for readings outside of my own personal use so here is the here's the back of the deck and on the back is every single card in the pack which I think is pretty cool um, the artwork is kind of it's always it's always quite strange now I picked these up when I was about 17 in my local bookshop uh, Waterstone for about ten pound, which is probably about twelve to fifteen dollars, and they're basically a one-card meaning. So, um, something cloudy, um, unclear. Always the heart's a bit of a giveaway. Change, stick with what you're doing. Your house or your family home, a good omen, protect, and something about you being protected. Um, positive growth in yourself and spiritual growth. And the deck kind of goes on like that. And I said, um, so I've basically had these for like 15, 16 years. But the thing about these are, as I said, I used to think these were fortune cut, um, these are Oracle, but I've recently discovered that they are Le Monde. But then, to be fair, it says it in the book, and I don't tend to read the books too often except for meanings. Um, when I first picked these up, it took me about two months to learn each individual meaning of these cards so I was really into these so I actually picked these up before I actually picked up tarot and so these were kind of like a, a gateway as it were so the next question is your favorite creator and of course those of you who have seen some of my prior videos but what will not be surprised well, my favorite creator at the moment is Arthur Wang creator of the true black tarot. Now, as I said, these have popped up in. I've already done a review of these, 
and he's featured it in my anniversary video. But for those of you who haven't seen this deck or either of those two videos, uh, this reason it's my favourite creator at the moment is because, well, first of all, first of all, the artwork is just so beautiful and amazing. It's uh, the nice little bonus card. I said the artwork is just outstanding on these. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to prattle on too much about these because I've talked about them before. But the artwork's so amazing. Basically, it's just so beautiful. And uh, the other thing about these is the cardstock is just amazing. It's really, th it's quite thick. It's got a great textured feel to them, and also waterproof, which is a nice little bonus because you don't want uh, water to ruin your cards. But then again, at the same time, I'm never in a position where water is so close to my deck that they're at risk of being soaked anyway. But um, I'm keeping this one short just because I've spoken about these twice already. So the next thing on the list is actually um, your favourite system of reading. Now I always now I have so that includes like runes, oracles, towers, and Le Monde. Um, I myself have a lot of t uh, quite a few tower, uh, lots of tower at the moment. I have quite a few oracle cards and a few um, and and a few. Uh, runes. Now, my favourite to use is tarot, hence the name of the channel, and just because, as, as I've said in previous videos, I like the structure, um, just because there's a nice there's, there's a nice framework to go off on, whilst with Oracle, uh, they're so disparate, they might not necessarily, they, they don't really fit the needs that I like. And uh, so the following question to that is, your favourite system within tarot? which I think is an interesting question um, because this covers like do you like um, the do you like the rider style or the Thoth style or even the t Marseille tarot sort of style and once again um, I'd have to say I prefer the riders because as interesting as the Thoth deck can be I don't because the Thoth deck is quite have a, has a nice kind of surrealness to them but then it also makes them very difficult to read and I'm quite lazy so I like stuff that's kind of comfortable it's kind of comfortable and though I do have some decks I find challenging to read with sometimes I just want to pick up a deck and just use them and not have to study too hard I know that sounds kind of lazy and, and unprofessional but um, I, I enjoy the artwork and reading tarot and stuff it's just Sometimes I'm more of a pick up and play sort of person. I don't mind having to study a deck, but then if I want, I feel that if I have to sit down and learn a, a single specific deck, then it's taking away time from other decks and it feels more like work. And I don't want it to kind of ruin my experience with tarot overall because I just because the more if I wind up being stuck on a particular deck in the concept of studying then I'd feel that I'm that my interest in that deck will diminish and then I might not even want to look at that deck or use it again so that's always that's always kind of a risk so the so the next question is the last deck I bought now I'm going to include two in these because I'm going to talk about the first of all the tarot, the most recent tarot I bought which was the Illuminati tarot and the other thing I bought was a um, an oracle deck, but I'll get into that later. So this is by the Scarabino, as most of my tarot collection is. Not because I have a particular preference to the Scarabino, but it's more just because um, there seems to be a lot more the Scarabino easy to pick up um, in stores and stuff. I don't tend to do Kickstarter that much um, because if, uh, because there'd be so many things to look through. But I'll probably go on that in a second. But so it's this one's got a nice back to it. Um, the th but one of my issues with this deck is that there's a lot of um, there's so much there's some it's very visually busy. So I would know I wouldn't say this is something for someone to start off with. But at the same time, the, the artwork. Oh, whoops! I'll put it up in a second. The artwork is nice, but it's just so busy. So this would be, a, I'd imagine this should be, a, I'm not, I'm probably going to read these, I'm still getting used to these, so 
I might do use these in a, in a couple of weeks for the card of the day. But what I found when I first looked through these is just that there's there's just very very busy, and so if you're someone who's kind of easily distracted, um, you could wind up falling into this quite quickly and just kind of um, finding a lot of depth and meaning into it, or you just might find find it a bit overwhelming because there's so much there that you can't really, there's so many things in it, you don't want to kind of look at it and go, oh there's this and there's this, that's contradicting this. And that, that's always a risk when, with um, if there's too much going on, which is one of the other reasons why I'm not a great fan of the Thoth deck, even though I have them myself. So I wanted to chuck those in, because the um, other, my most recent actual purchase were the uh, Gateway Oracle. And so these are done by Lifestyles, as some of the other oracles I have are. And uh, so, these reminded me of the Sacred Traveller, so I've picked these up because they just made me think of the Sacred Traveller, one of my favourite oracle decks. Um, this is a nice deck, it is quite nice and positive. Um, you've got your title there and your subheading there. Um, but I found some of these kind of repetitive. So th these are nice. I don't think I'd use them in readings myself, I might do them for myself, but nothing really, these don't really jump out at me, I don't really feel a great bond with these, but at the same time, sometimes I've had bonds with oracles that I don't, there's a deck of oracle I have that I, don't, I do not like the artwork at all, it is not my style, the theme is not my style, but I just can't help but use them, which I think is quite odd, but there you are. But um, as you see, these, these the, the, this nice artwork. Um, these are like quite thick card and stuff. So it's not bad cards. They're just it's just not really something I particularly want to. I probably won't really use these. As I said, I'll, I'll just keep them in my collection, but I wouldn't necessarily uh, read with them professionally or anything. So the next question on the list is um, my favourite tarot right now. And the one after that is my favourite tarot of all time, which you can imagine is kind of a tricky thing to uh, to answer, because what's your favourite now and your favourite of all time can might be the same deck. So I did have to put a bit of thinking into this. So I'd actually say my favourite tarot right now, and um, this is mentioned in my top five, as you can probably imagine, the Everyday Witch Tarot. Now I did, I said I did a top five. And these were in the top five. Um, obviously, the, if you've not seen it, I'm going to stop tapping this now. Um, if you haven't seen uh, that video, obviously, I'll put a link in the I'll put a link in the description. Um, I've seen these around. Uh, I saw these around quite a few times. A few people I follow on Twitter and Instagram use these, so I thought I'd pick them up. And all of a sudden, these wound up being my go-to deck. So I like to keep them in this bag. So. On the back, you have a nice uh, witch uh, broomstick, witch's hat, and a, cat, and a black cat. And so I'm going to try and keep this brief because I mentioned these uh, in the prior video. But they're bright. If you haven't seen this, so they're nice, bright, colourful, jolly. There's no, there's very few cards in here that are actually that feel down and negative. They are they are very not not necessarily a positive spin, but they don't, some of them aren't as miserable. So for example, you've got the three of heart, no, three of hearts. You've got the three of swords, um, but this one is depicted as a chocolate box and an empty room. So you know whoever's received that received the box of chocolates is probably um, they're obviously upset, but they're not showing anyone grief stricken because the room is empty and. Uh, so throughout this deck, it's just as I said, nice, bright, colourful. Um, um, as you can see here, the Eight of Swords. Uh, the woman is indeed um, in a precarious position, but um, but there's not necessarily a feeling of panic or darkness in this. Um, even there you go. Even the Ten of Swords. It's a struggle, but and compared to the Riders, it's not like a person who's just dead. There's there's okay. They're they're struggling, but then there's still there's still there is still hope they can get to the broom, sort of thing. So it's not just a feeling of just 
um, being overwhelmed and there's no way out. It's there is a way you just need to try, sort of thing. So this this deck is just I said very pleasant. In fact, um, in October they're releasing uh, the Everyday Witch Oracle, which I pre-ordered on Amazon because why not? Some a nice little sister deck. Whether I'd use that Oracle deck with the Tarot, I'm not sure, but you know, we'll find out. So that's my favourite deck right now. Uh, my f uh, so the next one is my favourite deck of all time. Um, at the moment, I don't think anyone would be surprised if I said it was the True Black Tarot. So I'm not going to go through this deck again. But uh, the next question is, uh, what decks that are around at the moment that I'd love to own? So at the moment, I have a massive laundry list of um, cars I still want to buy. Um, but two of the ones that stand out to me right now um, are the Crow Tarot. I don't know the creator of them. I will need to look into that, but it's the Crow Tarot. I currently have the Mist, uh, the Magic Crow Tarot, and they're pretty cool and funky. Um, if you check out my uh, Instagram and Twitter, um, I used them a few months back, so you still might be able. So they're still available to be seen on there, and. Um, so, uh, so I've seen the Crow Tarot, which do look amazing. Um, they are not uh, a deck themed on Brandon Lee, amazing as that would be. But um, that is that is one deck I would like to get a hold of. And another deck I wanted to get that I've seen recently was um, the Sacred Feminine, uh, Feminine Tarot. Um, I came across them from my good friend Harry Tidbits, um, who did use that, that deck as a card of the day. And uh, I'm going to look into those and might purchase them. So they might be deck 120. Who knows? I definitely don't. So the next thing on the list is um, a deck that you have but struggle with. So one of my favourite, most of my entertainment now is digital. So most of the stuff I watch is most of the stuff I watch is now basically YouTube. And some and stuff on Netflix. I'm starting to make my way through season two of um, Strange, uh, season three of Strange Things. But I'm also into podcasts. I really do enjoy a good podcast. So if you are really into podcasts, you might know what the next one's going to be. If you're not, then I'll tell you about this lovely podcast called Welcome to Night Vale. The podcast itself is based. It's it's done as a it's done as a radio, um, a local radio station, in a in a desert town called Nightvale, and the best way I can describe that town is Lovecraftian, um, sla uh, so Lovecraftian meets um, go uh, government conspiracies. It's a very strange town, and it's a very good podcast. And one of the things they did was, in, in their store, uh, Welcome to Night Vale, um, I think it's Welcome to Night Vale store, and uh, they made their own tarot. I gave it a look at first online, wasn't too interested in it, but then I thought, you know what, might as well, I, I have a I've got a slow collection now. So this is actually the logo of Welcome to Night Vale. And so here are the cards. So the back looks amazing. The thickness of card is really good. This is where I struggle because this kind of this is a deck that kind of does its own thing, which is fair because it's based off of its own, it's based off of a fiction. The one of the reasons I struggle with these is as much as I want to use them more often, is also because it's this podcast is a very old podcast. It's been going on for about four or five years, and in podcast terms, it's quite long. But then also means there's a lot of references in these decks that I just don't remember. Um, I never actually started watching it when it first came out. So I went up essentially just making my way through episode by episode. It comes out fortnight, uh, comes out on the 1st and the 15th of each month. With like a summer break. But what winds up happening is, for example, I actually have a vague memory of what this is supposed to be in universe. Um, I think it's actually supposed to be um, a giant from an alternate plane. Um, it makes sense in context, but 
Well, why is it happening? I said, what's wound up happening is, is that these cards reference things that I have long forgotten. And one of the issue, one of the small things with this deck, you get the you get the pa um, you get the bag as you saw, but you don't get a little book, which in one respect is cool because you can kind of read it your own way. But the problem is, as I said, it refers to characters in here and events that I don't actually have any memory of, just because I've never re-listened to any because I spent so long just catching up. I never had enough time to actually listen. So, for example, I know who this character is supposed to be. Um, he is the handsome scientist. Um, but yeah, it's there's a lot of things in here that I don't remember at all. For example, I can't actually remember the scientist's name right now. But um, you've got one of my favourite characters in the series is the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home. An omnipresent old woman who has no face. And um, the, this deck is actually one of the decks I have in my, in, in my animated intro. Um, the uh, Empress is from this deck but what I'm saying is it's I want to use these more often but it's just difficult because as I said as I keep saying there's just a lot of reference in here I just don't remember and so if it's coming from a source and you don't actually have a memory of that source then it's it feels it feel they're there you can understand why there's that struggle but right um, so, <clears throat> uh, the last question on this is, um, if you could, um, if you could have your own deck made, what would you have? Now, this is a question I answered before in a previous video about my, uh, my anniversary video, and my first response was, oh, um, I want there'd be a few decks I'd like to have. Um, I once saw a Pokemon themed deck on. Um, even art many years ago um, I'd love to have a Doctor Who themed deck that would be cool the problem with having a Doctor Who deck is it would either have to be a new iteration every four or five years or just because you've got so many Doctors at this point it'd be very difficult to have all of the major Doctors and all of the companions etc so that's something that would be kind of tricky to do um, I also said in this video, in my last video, that I'd love to have like a circus themed tarot, um, as as one of my one of my few one of my many side jobs is that I'm a circus performer, so I do so I juggle contact juggle and stilt walk, not all at the same time, thankfully. But um, and I said I'd love to have love to make a a circus themed tarot. Now I was then told that there is a circus themed tarot, <clears throat> but it's a very classic. I looked up, looked into it. And it looks like a very classic style, um, but I'd like a. But I'd probably go for a more modern sort of thing. So I'd like to see some contact jugglers, some stilt walkers, um, some trapeze artists, stuff like that, outside of the outside of the classic lion tamer and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, those, those are my thoughts. Um, as I said before, I thought I'd give this a go. Um, catch up on all these hashtags because I'm a young man relatively young at least hey guys thanks again for watching if you like the video please give us a thumbs up like share and subscribe and hit that bell notification uh, the intro and outro music was Tetris linear groove available on overclocked remix give that website a look great stuff on there and if you also like some of my other bits you can check out my videos and you can also follow me on Twitter Instagram and Tumblr at Blue6Tarot I'll see you again soon Thanks again for watching.